What is up, down, and sideways, you lovely individuals? We are back at Leak Unlock. My name is Eric. I'm that Millennium Falcon today for another deep dive episode. You can call it an autopsy. You can call it a reflection. A now with hindsight look back at the, I'm going to call it a debacle or disappointment that was the 2024 spring season for Cloud9. What went wrong? How do you solve the issues? Are they solvable? Will they be solved by 2024? But we start with some of the most glaring problems, changes, differences from what we got in 2023. And not even looking specifically at the roster moves, the most obvious difference between this year's cloud nine and last year's you can break it down look at the numbers because actually season 14 or 2024 c9 early game even better than 2023 when they made back-to-back finals in the lcs they had a better gold differential at 15 they had more control over other objectives but what was most obviously an issue in 2024 is what to do with those early game leads, how to translate it, how to snowball it into the mid to late game because the other obvious, most glaring stat to me, again, from 2023 to now is, okay, you have a gold lead more often this year, but in 2023, when Cloud9 had a gold lead at 15 minutes, 95.2% of the time, they won the game. That exact same stat in 2024 went ahead at 15, which they were ahead more often. They only won 73.3% of the time. And again, that to me is a sign of not being able to translate of that early game lead into taking over a game, snowballing it and controlling it from start to finish. Even a lot of the games Cloud9 were winning in the regular season. Uh, they were sloppy. They would get a big lead, maybe throw it once or twice, and eventually come away with the win. So what's the reasoning? Why were they not so good at closing out games with three-fifths the same roster? The number one point for me is a difference in the AD carry meta. We were seeing Cloud9 not able to just lean on the crutch that is Berserker. 1v9ing some team fights on Azari, Azaya, Akaisa like he did in 2023 when he was getting MVP in spring. We've seen 80 carries. There's been lots of memes about it. Have less of an impact. He's playing Senna as his most played champion in the spring regular season. You're just not going to pop off and carry a game on a pick like that compared to, I know he was playing a bit more Zeri. We got a single smolder game out of him. But the hyper carries have only just recently started coming back into the meta. They were not in the meta for the majority of 2024, which honestly hit a lot of the weaknesses that Cloud9 had was just put Berserker on a hyper carry and let him take over the game. That hasn't been uh, something that they've been able to do. The other big point has got to be just communication. The comms, if you listen to 2024, they're a little bit messy. Both Blabber and JoJo, both very vocal guys, sometimes maybe a little bit too vocal. Even Berserker, as he gets more and more comfortable speaking English, is communicating a lot more you compare i mean even fudge and vulcan you can throw in there sometimes these cloud nine comps there's like five guys talking at key moments in games there's just too much noise if you listen to t1 or some of the other best teams in the world the comms are relatively quiet in these high pressure team fights whether it's target selection or what objective to take after a team fight they're pretty calm cool concise it's faker kiria one or two guys deciding uh, or leading the conversation and where to go. Not just five guys throwing their voices around, saying every little bit of information that they have. Is this a change with Sven not in the lineup? Maybe he had, uh, I mean, he, we know he became a more vocal guy when he was stepping into that support spot, but something is not there communication-wise for Cloud9 when it comes to the macro gameplay, and that was evident even before they're getting 3 0 by both Team Liquid and FlyQuest. That was a glaring, flaring up problem that we saw throughout the entirety of the regular season. So 
Then you actually get to the roster changes, which on paper, Jojo to Jimenez should be a massive upgrade. And let's be honest, individually, even though Jojo had some bad games, some bad stretches, it still has been an individual upgrade over the level that you were getting out of Jimenez, especially when you look at the second half of 2023 summer and the World Championship. Vulcan, not so much. And listen, we're getting into dangerous territory now for Mr. Vulcan, Mr. Twitter himself, because now he's on back-to-back -back super teams that disappointed in a huge way. You can argue what was a bigger disappointment. Last year's FlyQuest not even making playoffs or this year's Cloud9 that everybody already had written their name on the LCS trophy, not even being able to represent at MSI. But that's back-to-back -back disappointing performances on squads that had insane, excuse me, expectations for Vulcan. But maybe overall team synergy with Sven. We know him and Berserker got along great. Maybe that's something to look for because... There was definitely more inconsistencies in the straight-up 2v2 laning phase out of Cloud9 than we got ever, really, with Sven and Berserker across all of 2023. And the other big thing that might be missing uh, with Sven, and these are the things we know now, the behind-the-scenes, the big news this week was one of those, uh, whatever, on Cloud9 or Sky's the Limit, you saw Berserker unbelievably frustrated with how scrims were going he's punching a wall he's walking out getting emotional because this guy he comes from that korean work ethic all he wants to do is win he's pissed off that his teammates aren't taking scrim seriously that's not just a cloud nine issue i don't think that's an lcs that's a north america issue from start to finish but Zven is a guy who also one of the hardest working guys that we've ever seen in the LCS. So maybe losing another voice like that in the team to call out players for not taking scrim seriously is something that Berserker and the squad are missing because when it's just one voice against the other four, maybe even the coaching staff as well, it's a little harder to be heard to get your point across. Maybe if Zven was there, he'd be feeling similarly, but this is why sometimes I feel like the LCS doesn't deserve a player like Berserker, who is so focused on winning, is just completely motivated, determined to be the best. That's why Korea has been the best region for so many years. It's because of that mentality. So God bless you, Berserker, for bringing it over to the LCS. And I'm sorry that we've disappointed uh, as a region and Cloud9 as a whole. But honestly, when he was getting upset, you could tell that Jojo and Blabber genuinely... Um, felt bad and were listening to what he was saying and completely understood because when a guy who's picked up MVP been the best, best AD carry for years in the LCS, you listen when he has something to complain about. So Berserker individually, I know had a bit of a down year, but I think he's just been burnt out by scrims not being taken seriously across the board for Cloud9. I really hope that changes for Summer, but what does Cloud9 as a roster do for Summer? Did they change? Did they need a roster move? I know Fudge is the number one spot that people are talking about. Could you make anything into summer? So many, I mean, everyone's still going to be under contract until at least after Worlds. The only one you could maybe think of is Licorice making a return to Cloud9. Obviously, he's teamless ever since Golden Guardians went kapooey, and we know he's incredible at playing weak side, and his last full year on Golden Guardians, he was... Legit a top three top laner in the LCS, really probably even top two across both spring and summer. So that's really the only roster move I could see happening. I know there's been rumors of some other challenger Korea players potentially uh, coming over to slide into that top lane. And I know Fudge does a lot more than just a lot more for this team off the rift. You've heard t players and organization uh, members talk about it. He's been there now. What? Like Three, four years almost as long as blabber at least a, well, probably a couple years after blabber but would that break up the team synergy it's hard to know i feel like this team these five are still good enough to sort things out and be a world's caliber team for the lcs even if they don't make any roster moves vulcan obviously the other new guy returning and i mean what do you do there? I'm, I'm more looking at the coaching staff and something changing because the entire play style of this Cloud9 roster needs to change. I'd be open to bring Sven on as the coaching staff, maybe a bot lane, a specialist, or 
We know he has a fantastic idea and mind for how to play the game, work alongside Mithy maybe, he can speak with Berserker, and Sven can be the guy because it shouldn't be Berserker calling players out for not taking Scrim seriously or getting upset when they don't take things seriously. That's gotta be the coaching staff that's doing that. If you bring Sven in, he's an immediate guy that's gonna demand respect from the players as an ex-player and we know he'll speak his mind and call players out if they're not taking things seriously so i'd love to see sven come on to the coaching staff in some capacity for the summer split and if you truly feel like you need to make a roster move licorice is really the only one that i could see maybe happening but i i'd be surprised if it wasn't these same five returning and you just say guys we got to run this back this team is way too talented to not at least be making it into finals but i feel like this is gonna the other reason you keep the main five they've got to be so motivated after this they were so hyped up everyone said they had the best off season they should be the best team in the lcs surely they got to be heading towards finals they're all going to be playing with the chip on their shoulder in summer as they should be because they were honestly embarrassed and for some guys at least jojo likes to talk a little bit of trash well you got to back it up and it was not backed up here in this spring split so whether or not it's the same five i think it will be and i think little coaching staff changes you need a full play style revamp and maybe just hope and pray that the meta uh, for 80 carries Keeps trending back towards Zeri and these hyper carries so that Berserker can carry C9 to the promised land and still save their season by representing the LCS at Worlds in 2024. But that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric. You people all stay beautiful. As always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.